Hello everyone. In the last video, we discussed about one of benign brain tumor that is vestibular schwannoma. Now, continuing with our discussion about the benign brain tumors, today let's discuss about one of a very commonly encountered benign brain tumor that is pituitary adenoma. Pituitary gland, also called as the master gland of the body, is responsible for release of various hormones from different glands of the body like thyroid, adrenal, etc. Now this is where the pituitary is located quite deep inside the brain and this is nicely protected inside a bony case called as cella tersica. Now a very important anatomical relation is that just above the cella there is what's called as optic chasm. Now this is a pair of nerves which begin from your eyes and are responsible for vision. Let's discuss more on this relation a little later. Now this pituitary gland is connected to a part of the brain called as hypothalamus by the stalk of the pituitary. Pituitary gland can be divided into an anterior pituitary or the part which is in front and a posterior pituitary, the part which is behind. Now these are the set of hormones released by the anterior pituitary. Now I'll not go into the details of each of these hormones but just to tell you in brief, TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to release its hormones while ACTH stimulates the adrenal glands to release cortisol. Growth hormone is responsible as its name suggests is responsible for the growth along with many other functions. The prolactin, FSH and LH have a lot of very complex actions which is definitely beyond the scope of this video to explain. While the posterior pituitary as such does not synthesize any hormones but it simply stores the hormones which are produced or synthesized in the hypothalamus and carried to the posterior pituitary through the pituitary stalk and when the posterior pituitary is stimulated it releases these stored hormones that is oxytocin and ADH or antidiuretic hormone. With this background, let's come to the topic of the day that is pituitary adenoma. Now what's an adenoma? An adenoma is a benign tumor arising from any of the glands. As the normal function of the gland is to produce hormones, the tumor arising from the gland or the adenoma may or may not produce hormones. So accordingly, pituitary adenoma can be divided into hormone producing adenoma or the functional pituitary adenoma or non-hormone producing adenoma or non-functional pituitary adenoma depending on the function of the cells of the tumor origin. It's also important to note when an adenoma develops inside the pituitary gland it compresses the rest of the gland and hampers its normal function leading to deficiency of various other hormones in the body. Now what happens when an adenoma develops from growth hormone secreting cells? Obviously there is going to be excess of growth hormones in the body and this leads to a feature that we have seen in the Great Kali. Depending on the size of the adenoma, it can be divided into microadenoma, macroadenoma and giant pituitary adenoma. What are the symptoms or the problems with pituitary adenoma? Now to begin with, patients can have imbalances in various hormones of the body. Now as I mentioned previously, it can be excess in case of a functional pituitary adenoma or it can be features of deficiency because of compression of the rest of the normal pituitary. Now as the tumor grows bigger, it starts stretching the top layer of the cella that is called as the diaphragm cellae and causes headache. Now, as the tumor grows bigger, it starts compressing the optic apparatus about which we already discussed. Now, what happens when the optic apparatus gets compressed? Obviously, that is going to cause problems in patient's vision. Now, to begin with, classically, patients have problem in viewing objects on either sides. The classical histories include uh, when the patient is driving, he is not able to see another vehicle that is about to overtake him and suddenly he feels as though some vehicle has come in front of his eye. 
because he is not able to see what is there at the site or some other classical uh, history include unable to see a lot of people who are talking from his sites when he's in a group now this if left untreated progresses to complete loss of vision if the tumor grows further it can occlude the csf pathway inside the brain and causes what is called as hydrocephalus about which we already discussed in our previous video of vestibular schwannoma now obviously if left untreated this can cause danger to patient's life now in addition to this because of hampering of the function of the posterior pituitary patients can also have electrolyte imbalance mainly in the form of hypo or hypernatremia that is decrease or increase in the level of sodium and cause various problems secondary to that evaluation of a patient suspected to have pituitary adenoma requires a few tests a mainly contrast enhanced mri of the brain hormonal analysis and visual testing which mainly includes visual acuity and visual field charting now once the diagnosis of pituitary adenoma is confirmed obviously it has to be categorized as a non functional pituitary adenoma and a functional pituitary adenoma now a functional pituitary adenoma needs to be excised operatively except if it is a prolactinoma which can be medically managed with a few drugs like cavergolin or bromocriptin obviously there are a few exceptions where prolactinoma 2 needs to be operated now if there is a non functional pituitary adenoma it has to be operated when it is a macro adenoma or more than 10 mm and is impending compression of the optic apparatus while there can be a few micro adenomas which are non functional and which are incidentally detected when mri brain was done for some other reason hence they are called as incidentalomas a very important thing to note here is a lot of patients present to us after the complete loss of vision and operating a patient after the vision loss is established will not bring back the vision hence the patient needs to be operated in time that is before he or she loses the vision this is where the awareness of the general public is important most of the time operative approach to the tumor is through the nose now this is the shortest and the safest route to the tumor now obviously just like any other operative procedure this operation too comes with its own complication risk the most common complication being a breach of what's called as an arachnoid layer between the tumor and the brain leading to leak of csf through the nose in the post operative period The other commonly encountered complication is imbalance in the level of the hormone that is ADH causing increase or decrease in the sodium level in the body called as diabetes insipidus or SIADH respectively. Sometimes there can be residual tumor left behind because of various reasons most important being avoiding injury to important blood vessel which is just adjacent to it that is internal carotid artery. Now obviously if there is a residual tumor it can grow back and cause all the problems again that is recurrent tumor now this may have to be reoperated or if there is a residual tumor this can be subjected to gamma knife therapy as discussed previously to avoid the chance of its regrowth sometimes in case of large tumor or in case of its extensive sideways or frontal extension doing a transnasal procedure may not be a suitable thing and in that case we may have to do a craniotomy and find a way through the brain to excise that large tumor now obviously this operation comes with its own set of complications so just like in uh, vestibular schwannoma here to an awareness of the general public to the early symptoms of pituitary adenoma plays a very important role in minimizing the damage that the tumor causes to the patient well these are few of the important points about this vast topic of pituitary adenoma well of course there are a lot of points about this topic which are still uncovered and may be covered in one of our upcoming videos if you found this video useful and informative Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and for more health and wellness related videos, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.